Hey guys, it's Hoser here, and today we're going to be doing a Stag 10 build right from the stripped upper and lower to a complete rifle. And uh, it is not my rifle, it is this guy right here. This is Javin. He's going to be helping out the channel. And uh, introduce yourself, Javin. My name is Javin at Baldhead on Instagram. Today we're going to be going over Stag 10 build. Um, basically, I ordered a stripped receiver set from RMZ, so we're going to go over all the parts I'll be using, how to properly install it to spec and everything. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. Okay guys, so let's start with the parts here that I've uh, picked out for this build. So starting from the back, we got a Magpul MOE fixed rifle stock here, uh, just in black. I've got a uh, TNA rifle length buffer tube, um, which just threads in there. I have an Armaspec uh, stealth recoil spring system here for the buffer, and an A2 length spacer. Moving along up, we have a Magpul MOE Plus grip in FDE. We have your Stag lower receiver, Stag upper receiver. Bolt carrier group is a Toolcraft um, phosphate chrome lined BCG, MPI inspected and I think high pressure as well. Uh, moving to the top of the rifle, we're going to be mounting a Vortex Diamondback 6-24 first focal plane MOA reticle. Um, that's a Nikon single piece cantilever mount there. We have a 20 inch bull profile ballistics advantage barrel in 308. Um, it's got some really nice bead blasting done on it there. The handguard we'll be using is the Maple Ridge Armory X1 17 inch in an FDE Cerakote. I just have a regular CNA black gas tube that we're going to be using. I have a superlative arms adjustable bleed off gas system, which uh, was pretty expensive. So we'll see if that uh, is worth the money. On the front here, we're just going to be putting on a fake suppressor for now that I ordered from True North Arms. Charging handle we'll be using is the Radian Raptor LT with the FDE grips there. And um, that's pretty much it. We got our barrel nut for the handguard and barrel, crow's foot wrench for torquing that down, and uh, that's pretty much it. So we'll uh, go over some details over the receiver set and we'll get to assembly. In Canada, there's three classes of firearms. There's restricted, non-restricted, and prohibited. So this firearm is a non-restricted firearm. So this gun, you could technically hunt with. You could also use it for target shooting or shoot on your own property. The AR-15 in Canada, by name, is restricted. So it does not matter how long the barrel length is, it is a restricted firearm. So if it uses an AR-15 receiver, it is restricted. So this gun is its own proprietary upper and lower. So that's why it makes this gun a non-restricted firearm in Canada. So as you can see, we're gonna take it apart here. You can see how the profile is a stoner profile instead of the typical uh, DPMS style AR-10 profile that's rounded. This one is a jagged, I guess, profile. So anyway, so this firearm, as long as it's fitted with an 18.6 inch barrel, it is a non-restricted firearm. So that's why we have a 20 inch barrel on this gun. So it will be a non-restricted build when we're done. So we're going to start with the lower receiver here and assembling that. Um, so it does come with a lower parts kit installed from Stag. So it'll have a trigger, bolt release, mag release there, and firing assembly, the safety, which is not installed right now. So first thing we'll do is actually, we'll do the safety and the pistol grip and the detent for that. And we'll show you how that all works. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do um, is your safety and your detent and your detent spring. These are very small parts, so make sure you keep track of them when you're doing this because they can fall out. And as you can see, they're very small. So um, first thing you need to do is find where you put your safety lever, which is right here. And um, that's not an ambidextrous one, it's single-sided. So we're gonna just throw it in right there, keep it in a safe position, and we'll hold that aligned. And we'll drop the detent in with the pointy part down in the little hole that's just offset from the grip screw hole. So we'll drop that in, that's there, and now you're going to need to basically line up while you put the pistol grip on this little spring so that it's pushing down on that detent. So we'll set that up and we'll show you how to do that. On a pistol grip, um, there's going to be a little slot here and that's going to allow the spring to sit and you're going to be pushing that up against the detent and that's what's going to let the safety click in and off the safe and fire positions. So to do that, we're basically going to keep the spring in there. We're going to keep our lower receiver angled so the detent doesn't fall out. Basically, just going to slide it on there. And you always want to make sure that you're not crushing your safety detent spring um, because if you do, your safety is going to be wobbly and it's not going to be good. You're not going to be happy. So just make sure that as you slide that grip on, you can see it start to go down in that hole and then you're good to take your grip screw, thread it in and tighten it down and then your grip's installed and your safety's installed. Okay, so we didn't film it because it's kind of a pain to do, but you got to get your grip screw started in the hole there, and then you're just going to screw it in, 
make sure you hold it so the the spring and detent are still under a little bit of pressure keep screwing it in and it takes a little bit to get those threads started there we go so now i'm reaching some uh some resistance there and you don't need to over tighten the uh the grip screw but you want it pretty tight so finger tight and then just maybe like quarter turn just to lock it in there and uh, that's installed there we can put our grip cover on and so there you have your lower with the grip safety works you can always test the trigger um, if you're gonna shoot or pull the trigger make sure you block it so it doesn't smack your uh, your lower there so comes forward resets comes forward oh resets put it on safe doesn't fire so we know that's good to go now so if you guys remember at the beginning of the video we said we have to use the proper tools well we don't have the proper tools <laughs> what would be really really helpful is to have a lower uh, receiver block that, for your vice and uh, we don't have that which isn't really that big of a deal but it would make it easier and for something to hold your gun if you have a, a crappy cheap mag you can jam a mag in there and crush it in the vice if you really wanted to but uh, we're not going to do that because these mags aren't really that cheap so buy the proper uh, vice block so we're going to install the rear takedown pin and then the stock as well so this stag 10 uh, receiver kit does come with all the parts for the back of the receiver so you just gotta be really careful with these you don't want to lose them because it's not very fun looking for them or having to buy just one part so here's your buffer we're gonna lube up the, the threads just put a little bit of uh what is this stuff called mil spec anti-seize grease pretty much just expensive anti-seize so we're gonna install the buffer it's pretty simple you just rotate this end so we're just gonna kind of tighten that on oh i guess i did that wrong too you're gonna want to back this off and put in your uh, buffer retaining assembly so we're gonna just basically put that spring in this and then you take this put it over top push it down and then just tighten your stock in as you can see that's locked in place so if you had the proper vice block what you could do is with the armor's wrench put a torquing tool and have this actually torqued properly but since we're a bunch of rednecks and then by the lower uh receiver vice block we're just gonna do it hand tight grab the ar armor's wrench and then just tighten it by hand because that's what rednecks do yeah it's pretty tight so now the buffer's installed and the buffer retaining pin you're gonna now want to put in the rear takedown pin okay so what you want to do is take your rear takedown pin put it in the slot take your detent put in that hole back there take your detent spring same thing and i like to kind of just hold pressure and then spin and you'll hear it click into place and then you'll hear it click into place there as well when it locks and then keeping it held up to take the stock and there's a the hole right there in the receiver which is made especially for or specifically for a rifle length stock just push it on take your screw And Magpul screws are always nice because they do put the Loctite on them, so you don't have to worry about putting Loctite. And you want to take a flat screwdriver and then tighten this in. And that would be finished. So on the rifle length uh, stock system, it does require rifle length spring and buffer. But with this little piece of plastic, you can actually modify it so that it can take carbine buffers and springs. So take this extension, and you just push it on the buffer, push down, and push it in. All right, now it's secured in there. You just want to push it to the back and then you take your buffer assembly so this one's a kind of a new or not new kind of interesting uh way of doing it so this one doesn't it actually is really quiet because if you ever listen to a buffer spring it actually is really loud this one's a, a quiet system it's the same thing you just take the uh, end push on the buffer push it in same thing at the front push down and then push it in and she's set Alrighty guys, so we don't have a cameraman to really film while we're doing the dimpling. So what we did is we actually dimpled the barrel for the gas block set screw. So as you can see right here, the gas block has two set screws. And uh, just having a flat barrel with a set screw sitting on it isn't really that secure. So what you can do is you can buy these little jigs right here. And what you do is you put it on the gun. And there's a little set screw with a that's pointed. And you put it right over top of this, the gas block and you just kind of wiggle it while you're tightening it into place and what it does is it sets this right in right in the middle of the gas block or the, the gas port sorry and then what you can do is run a drill through this hole and just kiss it just a little bit to make a little dimple so we use this drill press right here and we just hold it in place 
and just kind of lined the drill up and just just gave it just a little bit of a kiss so basically by doing that now we've perfectly centered where the gas block has to go on oops it'd be nice if i put it on the right way that'd be gucci so as you can see now that spot is perfect for this to be get lined up into so same thing you just kind of wiggle it into place and we'll find that dimple and then yeah she's lined up so now that the gas block is set now we gotta take it off and then now it's gonna be time to put the barrel in the upper receiver all right so you grab the uh, stag 10 upper and then you put it in the vice block so this one does both ar-15 and ar-10 uh, upper receivers so what, what you want to do is obviously you want to put the barrel in here right but it is very smart to not just throw that in there you do want to put some of this uh ar-15 anti-seize geese 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 or grease <laughs> anti-seize grease so i like to put just a little bit on the threads you don't have to go too crazy because when you're tightening on the uh the barrel nut it will move that all around and also too i like to put it on the, the extension as well just so then if you ever want to take the barrel off it will come off easy you know there will be like carbon and dirt that builds up in here you don't really want that in the way so okay so once that's on you can toss the barrel in and it, this piece right here needs to go right inside of here then you take your barrel nut threads facing the uh, receiver it's a little bit of crap right there so i like to hand tighten it first just get it positioned and then now we're going to set up the torque wrench so we can torque this uh barrel properly we are torquing on the barrel to uh, 35 foot pounds so the manufacturer of the rail says we have to tighten and loosen the uh barrel nut three times just to work in the threads so so this is gonna be the second time so you can hear that click that's to 35 pounds okay and then you never want to loosen with a torque wrench even though it does have the ability to loosen you just don't do it so i have a swapped out for a johnson bar to loosen it off i'm not really a big fan of the crow's foot system uh with maple ridge i like the geisley system where it's actually just a hole and then a hole in the gas block, or not the gas block, oh my goodness, a hole in the barrel nut. This one is, uh, it almost, it slipped on me before and almost slipped on us again. I had to swip, uh, swap out the torque wrench. This torque wrench is just a little bit too big and it hits the, uh, the barrel nut when you're trying to tighten it on. So I'm using a smaller torque wrench with an adapter up to uh, the half inch drive. So now this is gonna be the third time of tightening it on. And this will be the final time. And you always want to torque from the top pulling down and i also like to hold this in place just so it doesn't slip on me okay i heard that click and it's good so the barrel is mounted okay so pinning your gas tube in your gas block is probably the biggest pain of the whole process so what i try to do is you you just pinch the roll pin a little bit just to get it in there, tap it in a bit. I try to line up the gas tube just like straight through. If you hold it up to the light, you can usually see it. And then I put a piece of tape on there so it doesn't wiggle around on me while I'm trying to punch it through. So you take your 564th roll pin punch, not a regular punch because you're just going to muck up your pin there. You want to take it, want to take a hammer, you know, hold the pin right in there. Just let the struggle begin. Shaky hands so it's harder than it should be. Ooh, the FX9, the fresh rattle can job just came in. I don't know how I'm going to do this. <laughs> As you can see, it's uh, not doing what it's supposed to do there. Oh, that's good. Man. I'm going to show you guys the hoser gun guy way of putting the roll pin in the gas block to secure the uh, gas tube. It's literally the biggest pain in the butt about building an AR-15 or AR-10 or whatever. So after struggling for about an hour, which is pretty sad, we finally got the gas block pinned. So it is kind of a pain in the butt. You might have to just try to find your own way of doing it. What we did is we started the, the roll pin with the proper size of a roll pin punch, and then we moved to a bigger size 
to uh, finally get all the way through. So thank you, Chad, for that idea, because it worked. So what we did is we took these uh, set screws off, put just a dab of blue Loctite on them, just to help keep them uh, tight. Now we're gonna put it on the barrel and get it uh, ready to go. All right, shut up, you freaking dirtbag. <coughs> Alrighty. So now, installation of the gas block on the barrel. So as you can see, there's a shoulder right here that's machined into the barrel. You see it's also kind of rised up right here, so that's where the gas block's sitting on. So this is a 936, right? 936 uh, gas block, which is big boy gas block for sure. So you gotta line up this gas tube into that hole, into the receiver. Just like that. And since we dimpled that barrel right on center, we can start with the back one. And I already have put Loctite on these screws. You can just kind of jiggle it into place and it starts to center itself. And just take a look and it looks dead nuts. Just perfect. And we don't need to go crazy tight either, just And she's good. Okay, so now we will be installing the handguard onto the barrel nut. So basically how this works, Maple Ridge Armory, they have a barrel nut that's got two slots cut out in it. And you'll see there, these two set screws, one will go through there, the other one from the other side, and they basically sit there and index the handguard properly. So it's not gonna shift at all. And then they have an indexing tab for the top to mate properly with the top of the receiver here. So you can tell if you're lined up, pop that in there, slide it over, and it's there. So now we'll start by putting these just in, starting the threads, get that started and have the proper, no, this one isn't it. I know what it looks like, it's the bent one. He sent me a bent Allen key. And we'll start. Run that on there, get the other side going. I don't know if this makes a difference, but it, um, this tab seems to be doing its job. Let's see if this one's in, that one's probably in further. Hey, baby. What's up, baby? What's up, baby? What's up, It's starting to get tight there. That's tight there. So looks like it pulled a little bit to the to this way. Is it just moving? Mm-hmm. I fixed it for it. How tight is it supposed to be before it doesn't move? There's probably instructions. All right, so it looks good. So handguards installed. So now we got the upper receiver on a torque tool for 308. So it's basically just essentially what looks like a bolt face that you clamp into a vice block here, and that allows you to torque on the barrel without damaging the upper and the indexing pin. So we got a 5 8 by 24 crush washer here, and we're just gonna use that on the end to make sure that our fake suppressor here stays on. If I can get this started, then that'll be really good. Oh, there we go, I got it started. So when you put a crush washer on, you'll notice that there's a slight bevel um, and you want that bevel to be facing your barrel. So the bevel faces back, and then you basically crush it from the front. And so we'll keep threading. And so now we're started, and I'll just give it hand tight, crank it, and should stay on there pretty good. So now our upper is complete. Just got to throw the scope on, which we have right here. So it's basically a one piece Nikon mount with locking lugs underneath. So those just, you pop on. And I might do that once it's all together. It's a little much. There we go. So now that we got our upper completed, torqued down, set, everything, we can basically slap it on the lower and put the bolt carrier and charging handle in. We got a functioning rifle, so I'll just do that quick. So here's the lower completed. Basically, you wanna put the front pin in first. That way it hinges. So you're gonna to wanna to stick the charging handle in first up a bit until you feel it kind of pop into a slot and then it'll slide and then grab your bolt carrier group, put the gas key inside the slot in the charging handle and you basically just send it home. Bolts and battery, close the dust cover, put the back on, 
put it together. Now we've got ourselves a functioning rifle, boys. So now we're gonna probably mount the optic. Um, I brought some dummy rounds. We'll see if it feeds, locks up, all that good stuff. And uh, she'll be good to shoot. All right, guys, so now we're gonna do some function testing on this gun. As you can see, these are dummy rounds. I do not suggest ever using live rounds uh, while you're indoors, especially testing a gun, because you never know, it could slam fire or something stupid, and you definitely don't wanna shoot inside your house. So, put this mag in with one round. I'm just gonna see if it chambers the round. And uh, let's see if it chambers the round. Yep. It's tough, that's a good sign. Okay, so now we're gonna eject the round out, take this mag out, take another mag with a dummy round, same thing. How'd that feel? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna say this thing's uh, almost ready for range use. Obviously, I would suggest head spacing your guns as well, just to make sure that uh, you know, everything's proper, so it doesn't blow up in your face, because that's not fun, especially when you spend like $3,000 on a build. Alright guys, well I hope that you uh, enjoyed this video today uh, of us building up the Stag 10. Obviously it was a lot of fun and also kind of stressful at the same time. The gas block was definitely not the most fun, but we got through it. And uh, hopefully you guys can too if you're going to build these rifles. Or if you're just curious about the Stag 10, you know, thanks for stopping by. I'm Hoser and this is uh, Javin. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching.